Hi, and welcome to NRCC Business Talk. We have Ari Welthuizen at the uh, at the show today. And uh, first of all, let me start by thanking you for sharing this thing because there's going to be interesting uh, content to share with your friends that might be interested in the relationship between Romania, the Netherlands and the economic links and of course mostly the agriculture area because Ari here is the agriculture counselor uh, for the embassy. Thank Hello, you. welcome. Thank you. First of all, uh, second largest agriculture exporter, the Netherlands, in a very tiny place, you know? How do you do that? Exactly. Um, indeed, we are the second largest exporter uh, in the world. We are the second largest exporter of uh, agriculture in the world. And uh, that's because we are able to produce a very efficient, we're a very small country. Uh, mm -hmm. After the Second World War, so in the 50s, 60s of uh, past uh, century, uh, uh, the Netherlands have innovated a lot of uh, technologies and also uh, uh, knowledge uh, to make on a very efficient way uh, food. And mm -hmm. this knowledge is well developed. The government uh, invests a lot of it. And, uh, and now we can export our technology, our knowledge and our products. The secondly, why we are one of the largest exporters of the world is that we are a trade country. A lot of, um, a lot of uh, products uh, or raw materials are coming into the Netherlands uh, through the harbor of Rotterdam. And there it will, in the Netherlands it will be processed, more mm -hmm. or less, and then we export it. Uh, the export is actually mostly to the uh, countries around us, eh? so mm -hmm. the United Kingdom and uh, Germany and France and Italy. I do get my Dutch cocoa every morning. It's from the Netherlands, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't. I don't suspect you're growing it in no, the Netherlands. No, 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 no you're not. No, no, no we import okay. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we import it. But that is actually. Uh, uh, I think one of the reasons that we're the second largest exporter mm -hmm. of agricultural products in the world. <laughs> well, you started early. I mean, you started, what, five centuries early by going to, to India for spices. Now, going back to Romania, the agriculture here has been landlocked, uh, has been usually a large scale, uh, during the communist time, a large scale exploitation. Uh, it was changed after the revolution in smaller lots and then they began to reconcentrate, to re, uh, redevelop uh, large farms. And what is your take? Because you're new, you're fresh here. You've, you had a chance to take a look around. How does it feel from, from a Dutch guy coming into Romania and looking at the Romanian agriculture? How does it look like? What I see actually is a country with a huge potential to produce food. And uh, as you know, we all have our common responsibility in feeding the world. We have 10 billion people in 2050. And uh, so we need to assure that we can produce enough food for all. And uh, that is one of the tasks, especially I think for countries within the European Union, also for uh, Romania. And I see that we can uh, build partner as partners, we can build on the situation. The current situation in Romania is uh, a situation of tradition. Uh, uh, Romanian has the largest number of uh, farmers, especially the small scale farmers mm -hmm. in, uh, in Europe. Uh, and if you talk about agriculture, then you can. Then I see in the six months that I'm here, uh, two uh, groups. You see the agricultural uh, families, and uh, that there are these two and a half million uh, agricultural families who are, who have, for instance, a cow, uh, have a, a pork, a pig, uh, for pork meat. They grow a little bit for themselves, so they're, they're self-sufficient. They uh, uh, trade a little bit with their neighbors. Maybe they have a small job, uh, and they're not getting a uh, money from the European Union, eh, from the Common Agricultural mm -hmm. Policy, the, di the direct income uh, uh, system. Uh, so, this uh, traditional farmers uh, are, I think, very valuable, and it's also for Romania very nice that they have it because you can also use it for uh, use them uh, or ask them to to maintain the rural areas. But the most the other 
uh, group, which is a quite important group, are the one million farms. Uh, the farms who uh, receive direct income uh, from the uh, European Union and uh, the agricultural business is their uh, profession. From mm -hmm. this one million there are I think around 800, 850,000 farmers still quite small so and uh, I think maybe now 50,000 are, uh, are uh, professional, mm -hmm. uh, big maybe a little bit less, more, I don't know exactly. And then you have a group in between. Uh, they are, um, okay, they have more than uh, a few hectares. So they are, and they, and, and this specific group needs to be, uh, needs to develop. Now, where do you come in? Are there specific projects, special projects, where the Dutch experts, maybe Dutch farmers, are getting involved in sharing the expertise with the Romanian farmers? Now that is, uh, we want to do that uh, in partnership with the Romanian government, and um, we have, we are sharing already mm -hmm. our uh, our knowledge. We uh, in this year three very important projects will be uh, finalized, that are so-called PIBs, Partners in International Business, and uh, we have one PIB on dairy, one PIB on fruit, and one PIB on horticulture and uh, uh, one of the future of these uh, PIBs is that they uh, uh, have also consortiums, consortia from uh, Dutch companies. So we have a uh, horticultural consortium which is real um, involved already in the Romanian sector, a dairy uh, uh, consortium, uh, the Dutch Dairy House, and a fruit consortium. And the past years, these three consortia have done several uh, activities and did also some investments in Romania to build up their expertise, to, to build up uh, their, their experience, and to seek for partnerships with Romania to exchange knowledge and uh, technology. Now, you know, Romania, we all know, has a huge potential due to the surface in the first place. Um, but um, how do you think that we can develop sustainable food chains? Um, in the first place, uh, is Romania producing their food already sustainable and also circular? especially these two and a half million agricultural families. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't waste their food. Uh, the food chains are very short. So uh, I think uh, in this, uh, in this uh, group, uh, sustainable production is not really an issue. It is sustainable, it's not it efficient. When you see a person exactly. on a field exactly. with one cow, exactly. that's really not going to cut it no, in terms of efficiency. It's it's, it's not efficient, uh, uh, of course, uh, and you can make it more efficient, but uh, I wonder whether when we talk about this first group, eh, there's two and a half million farms with an, uh, uh, with which this way of living is their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I wonder whether you want to focus on that group. Uh, because they have also another role that's traditional, and uh, uh, you can uh, you can focus on diversification and so on. Anyway, that group is going slowly, fading out. Exactly. Because exactly. Yeah, yeah. the kids are moving to town. Yeah, or uh, other countries. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so you have to focus on the second group, mm -hmm. uh, so the farmers. Uh, yeah, farmers, mm -hmm. and the majority of them are also still producing sustainable. Uh, so it's indeed, as you say, as you said, a uh, 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 question of how can we professionalize the, this this group, and how can we create a situation that the Romanians can contribute to the food security issues mm -hmm. which are uh, currently running in the world. Any uh, projects in that regard? No, b for instance, eh, uh, but I think the Romanians can do it by themselves, but they need to be accompanied by people who have the experience to mm -hmm. do that. We have the experience to uh, build up uh, systems in which you can produce efficient food also with less uh, labor costs and so on and uh, Romania has the sources uh, to, to do that so together as partners we, c we can we can do it we are ready we are ready to work together 
and uh, I'm not calling facilitating, I'm not calling it helping, and I'm not calling it, uh, I think it's a win-win situation eh, for both of mm -hmm. us. And uh, uh, we are currently really seeking for uh, possibilities to make this happen together with the Romanian uh, government. Last week in uh, the Netherlands, in Leeuwarden, which is the, cult which is the cultural capital of uh, Europe, uh, I think, <laughs> uh, this year. This year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a common agricultural policy uh, conference in which the State Secretary of Agriculture, Mr. Mares, was invited. The former Secretary of State, Mr. Potor, was invited. They both were there. Mm -hmm. And they were introduced used in the, in the yeah, kind of examples and in the way we are treating with our uh, uh, rural area in the Netherlands. Uh, for instance, we have, uh, we have also farms uh, in which you can go on holiday. Mm -hmm. We have a ch a ch just a cheese farm. We have uh, farms which are uh, transferred into uh, uh, kind of an care farms where you can care eh, for, for, for people. Now, you name it and you have a farm for it in the Netherlands. And that is mm -hmm. also a kind of an experience in which you can, ex can showcase how you can maintain the rural areas. What is also important, and I want to frame that too, is that uh, we see that many of the young people in the rural areas are leaving the country, are going to Western Europe or other countries, and it's seen as uh, not a really a positive experience. But on the other hand, you can also uh, see uh, a kind of a uh, case that it's positive. They are going to other countries, they are looking into learning, the world, they maybe. are learning, they are learning uh, different cultures, and as soon as they see it, it will be better here in uh, Maybe Romania, they will want to come, come back and change stuff here. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Talking so about... It's, it's, a, it's a kind of an, uh, an um, yeah, a transition period mm -hmm. which takes a, a generation at least. Now talking about change, we are taping this in February, we have, we should have had 10 centimeters of snow. Instead, we have 10 degrees Celsius in Bucharest, uh, which is not normal to my experience, also to our you know, collective memory. This is a bit strange. Uh, and this can imperil food supplies, too. Global change and climate can imperil crops, for instance. Um, what can we do together, and what can we do separately? Mm. Climate is an issue. Uh, we are actually, the Sustainable Development Goals are talking about the climate, they're talking about food security and so on, and uh, food safety. Uh, but climate uh, is also one of the main reasons why we have to professionalize our food production. What can we uh, do on that? Um, now, it's not just the agricultural sector who causes uh, climate change, although the dairy of the or, or, or uh, that's, that's researched mm -hmm. that the, the agricultural has a certain contribution to it. We yeah. should stop eating meat. Maybe, I don't know. Um, I'm not an expert. At least beef. Yeah? <laughs> I'm not <laughs> an expert. I like beef. Okay. And I Me like too. also dairy products. Uh, um, and uh, I th I, I'm not so convinced that we need to stop to eat beef. You can also uh, choose for a more conscious way of consuming agricultural products. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, that I think that is important. Uh, but the climate is also, uh, the climate change is also caused by other products. Um, food waste is, for instance, also very important. Do you know that uh, in the Netherlands the food waste pro uh, problems are quite high? If we have, uh, if we collect all the food wasted in the Netherlands, that was a few days ago in the newspaper, then you can load a, a, a line of trucks from Amsterdam until Barcelona uh, with, with the food what is wasted in one year in the Netherlands. There are some discussions on this, uh, uh, on this number, but it's a lot what is wasted. So we're looking, we're also in, uh, in uh, conversation now with, uh, in contact now with uh, Mega Image to see how we can uh, uh, 
contribute to the uh, an, uh, reduction of the food, wa food waste here in, uh, in Romania. In Romania too. Because, yeah. <laughs> so that's important. And for myself, uh, I would like to give also a a personal note in reducing the uh, the climate uh, problems. So I'm trying to work paperless in my office. I As noticed that. Yeah. How do you do that? You're never printing anything? That is uh, my goal. Uh, okay, but I'm also in a transition phase. Uh -huh. So uh, sometimes <laughs> sometimes I, I need a print. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I try to uh, be aware of it and try to motivate other people to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it's, it's difficult, but you can work paperless if you want. I can teach you how to bike to work, because I do that too. Okay. But you will need a pollution mask. Because Here. In Bucharest, pollution masks are just like in, in, in Asia. Some of the cities yeah. there have smog here too. You don't see that that, that often, but you do get a lot of uh, lung, uh, no, the, the lung gets a, a bit of suffering. I mean, it burns, it burns my trachea, for instance. So I need to use the pollution mask, but I try to bike to work as, as, uh, as possible. As, yeah, yeah, I mean, at least 200 days per year. Mm. I can tell you, I've lived for two years in New Delhi. Mm -hmm. Now that's the most polluted city in the world. Is it? Uh, and okay. and I lived for four years in Hanoi, which is also uh, dramatically, yeah, really dramatically. So. I think the climate here is quite good in uh, Bucharest, really. And if I measure, if I see the values on my uh, screen here in Bucharest mm -hmm. and I compare it to New Delhi and Hanoi, then I think, no, it's uh, not so bad. Yeah, <laughs> but let's not go to those standards. <laughs> we, we, should, <laughs> we should go to uh, higher ones. You're uh, right, you're now, right. Now, coming together. back to the second pillar of the uh, common agricultural policy, rural development. Any programs by the embassy involving, uh, involving the, Dutch, uh, the Dutch experience into that rural development? Now, uh, we have programs, of course. But uh, our main uh, purpose is to work together with the Romanian government uh, to contribute to their program. Mm -hmm. That is the most important thing. It's, uh, it is actually the challenge of the Romanian government to make a uh, switch in the rural er er area policy. Do you feel there's progress there? I think there's a sense of urgency. That's what I feel, yeah. mm -hmm. because the contribution of the uh, common agricultural policy will be changed. Th this process is mm -hmm. uh, currently uh, going on, and one part of this change of this common agricultural policy is that the direct income from uh, the to the farmers will be reduced. Uh, the height of, mm -hmm. of the amount of money. That means that they also have to find other ways of income uh, and uh, for direct payment. And uh, the money uh, which is uh, reduced will be handed over to the second pillar, rural development. Mm -hmm. And that will be handed over to the governments to the of the member states. And they have to divide it between their, uh, they have to put it into their rural development policy. Now, my NRCC contacts are telling me there's an NRCC agriculture task force. Yeah. How does that work and what is the role of the embassy there? We are also there as experts, as mm -hmm. representatives of the Dutch agricultural government and sector. Uh, next week, of this, this Friday, there's an, uh, or next, w next week Friday, there's another uh, meeting and uh, we are current, we are always there. Uh, present and we try to um, advise to contribute to showcase what 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 the situation in the Netherlands is and what we can offer. We cannot offer money. Uh, we can we have the knowledge, we have the technology, we have the uh, experience, and if there is a demand in this country, then we can deliver. Mm -hmm. But it's not that uh, we can uh, deliver and also pay for it by our own budget that's yeah we cannot do that mm -hmm. anymore and that's often the question uh, yeah there's a huge demand but yeah there's no there's there the budget needs also to be there so we can provide everything and uh, on a sustainable way but that's also uh, uh, as we say uh, there need to be a budget 
available to make this possible. This okay, development. going back to, to wrap it up, going back to NRCC events, I reckon you didn't have enough time to attend uh, a lot, but which is the best you've been so far? Which one do you like the best? Uh, I haven't uh, indeed uh, uh, be so 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 many, but the the best w the, the there are two uh, events current which I have uh, recently visited. That is the the one of the small and medium enterprises that mm -hmm. was uh, last week uh, Monday evening. Mm -hmm. Huge success. I think it's very good that uh, NRCC is paying attention to especially this group of, uh, of, of, of companies because they are the, the backbone mm -hmm. of, the, of the industry. That's very important. Uh, and then the second one was the ING uh, financial uh, overview uh, meeting two weeks ago, which mm -hmm. gave us a good insight in the Romanian position in the in the, this situ in the current uh, time frame. Uh, which one do you plan to attend? Where I've, I've attended them both. No, which one do you plan to attend, the next ones? Next ones. Um, uh, I have not the calendar in my head, uh -huh. unfortunately, but this evening there is uh, the, the monthly uh, borrow, so-called business borrow, business mm -hmm. network uh, event, and we'll join that uh, certainly. And uh, I think that the uh, NRCC is really contributing uh, to the relationship between Romania and the Netherlands. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Adi Welthuizen, Agriculture Councillor of the Netherlands uh, Embassy in Romania. Thank you very much for sharing. I'll be seeing you next time at uh, the NRCC Business Talk. <laughs>